Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Vivek Ramesh Darga. I'm a junior resident at Justice K.S. Egede Medical Academy at Mangalore. I'm going to present a paper on CT hypoperfusion complex, recognizing shock before it's too late. Shock, as we all know, is a medical emergency that represents one of the most common underlying causes of mortality. The choice of imaging modality depends on several factors associated with the clinical condition and on the presence or absence of localizing signs and symptoms. CT hypoperfusion complex refers to predominantly abdominal imaging features that occur in the context of profound hypotension. Originally, this was described in post-traumatic pediatric patients by Taylor et al. in 1987. Multiple abdominal organs can display atypical appearances which are not related to the initial trauma, but it reflects alterations in perfusion secondary to hypovolemia. The small bowel is more commonly affected than the large bowel and probably any other organ in the body. The term CT hypoperfusion complex is now preferred over the older and the lesser accurate term which was called as the shock bowel. The aims and objectives for this study, the aim was to signify the importance of a radiological imaging in evaluating the patients with hypovolemic shock and the objective being to illustrate vascular and visceral features of CT hypoperfusion complex. The MDCT features of six patients, which included five male and one female, who presented to our emergency department in year 2022 with documented hypertension and blood loss following trauma, were retrospectively studied. The CCT examinations were conducted with GE120 slice CT scanner at our department. The images which were obtained during arterial venous and delayed phases were analyzed for the presence of findings comprising the CT hypoperfusion complex. The age distribution ranged between 10 and 60 years with male predominance. So out of these six, five were male who presented with hypovolemic shock following acute history of trauma. Whereas one female patient presented to us with septic shock and this female patient had no history of trauma. The GCS scores of all the patients who presented with traumatic history was more than 11 by 15, while that of the patient who presented with septic shock was 8 by 15 at initial presentation. So this is our result, five male, one female. Again, etiology, five had history of blunt abdominal trauma and one patient had septicemia. The most common CCT finding that we found in this was the presence of what was described earlier as a shock bubble, that is abnormal enhancement of the small bubble loops. We found that in about seven patients, that is seven out of seven patients, whereas moderate to cross societies was found in six out of seven patients, followed by slit like IVC or compressed inferior vena cava, followed by pneumoperitoneum and mild bilateral pleural effusion. Bilateral pleural effusion could likely have been just an associated finding, but this is what we found. Whereas the least common finding was hyper enhancement of any other viscera, which will be discussed in the upcoming slides. So this is what has been described as shock bubble. So here we can see there is a mucosal hyper enhancement here along with submucosal edema. So you can see mucosa is hyper enhancing and the second middle layer what we can see is slightly hypo enhanced uh, submucosal edema. And this is classically how a shock bubble appears especially in cases of hypovolemia. Along with that some intramural pockets within the small bubble loops or small bubble walls were also noted. The pathophysiology of this particular enhancement of small bowel is because of hypotensive shock, there is sympathetic stimulation which causes splanchnic vasoconstriction and reduced bowel perfusion, which will result in altered permeability of the bowel, which will cause interstitial leakage of fluid and contrast. As a result of because of this interstitial leak, we can see there is prominent mucosal enhancement and some submucosal edematous all thickening. This was another patient here we can see intensely enhancing small bowel loops because of the, uh, 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 the the permeability is broken and hence that contrast material will accumulate and which will result in hyper enhancement of these bowel walls. The second finding was hyper enhancement of bilateral kidneys. So this is actual and coronal images of the patient where we can see the kidneys are so hyper uh, enhancing that uh, the corticomedullary differentiation is hardly made out here. Again, this is another example where we can see that the kidneys are very hyper enhancing.
So the reason why this particular finding is find, found is because of the reduced blood flow to the kidney secondary to hypotension. This will activate the renin angiotensin system, which in turn will increase the production of angiotensin 2 and cause its increased concentration. So what this particular, uh, uh, the next step would be is this angiotensin 2, it causes constriction of the efferent renal arterioles. As a result of which, the contrast that is going in through the efferent arteriole will not be allowed to be going out through the efferent arteriole and as a result, there will be prolonged cortical enhancement which we just saw. What we also noticed was there was hyper enhancing bilateral adrenal glands. So here we can see that the right and the left adrenal glands are hyper enhancing. So is also the hyper enhancing left kidney here. So this hyper enhancement of adrenal has been attributed to because of there is of the redistribution of the blood flow to adrenal. Why? Because to maintain production of adrenaline and thereby to maintain arterial pressure. Hypoenhancing spleen was also noted in one of the cases. So here we can see that there is significant reduction in the enhancement of spleen compared to the liver. So the reason for this is that spleen is most vulnerable abdominal organ to hypotensive shock and it often shows extremely decreased enhancement in early phases of the CT. So splenic hypoperfusion is a very useful predictor of poor prognosis among patients who have systemic hypotension. Another finding that we uh, uh, we quite commonly saw was uh, the presence of something called as a slit-like or flattened IVC. So here you can see that the abdominal aorta is very well made out here and uh, on the right lateral side you can see a slit-like enhancing structure. So this is basically a flattened inferior vena cava which is appearing like a small slit. So this flattening of the inferior vena cava is the result of decreased circulating blood volume and it indicates that there is a reduced return of the venous blood in patients with systemic hypotension. So we will classically call it as a slit-like IVC when intrahepatic vena cava or particularly any vena cava is measuring about less than 3 mm anteroposterior diameter in more than or equal to 3 segments. So this was another case. Again, here where you can nicely make out the aorta is uh, the, the caliber of the aorta looks okay and this is and flattened inferior vena cava. So this diameter was less than 9 mm here. And this was uh, a concomitant finding in that patient. What we saw was shock bowel. So you can see that there is thickening, but it's uh, the small bowel mucosa is very intensely enhancing. Along with IVC, IVC represents reduced blood flow. So also that blood flow, so basically the whole venous and the arterial blood volume will reduce. So in some patients, we can also see a small caliber aorta. So small caliber aorta is called when the AP diameter is less than 13 mm above the renal arteries or when it is less than 20 mm below the renal arteries. So this occurs in about 30 patients of 30% 30 of patients with hypovolemia, but however, it's not very specific. So this was a case where the aorta measured 8.3 mm in anteroposterior diameter. So this was uh, the presence of a small caliber aorta in the patient with hypotensive shock. There is also presence of periportal cuffing. So we can see here, these are just the light, uh, left branch of the portal, the right branch, uh, right branch of portal. And we can see a cuff of uh, of edema of a fluid surrounding this main portal, uh, right and main, uh, right and left main portal branches. So this periportal edema is often seen in conjunction with CT hypoperfusion complex. It is thought to occur if hypovolemic patients are vigorously rehydrated and then there is subsequent deep distension of the periportal lymphatic vessel. So just like how we saw here, periportal edema, in, in few cases, we can also see this uh, edema surrounding the uh, IVC. So that is called as a halo sign. But uh, we could not uh, demonstrate this halo sign in, uh, in the six subjects that we studied. But literature shows the presence of this halo sign in in cases presenting with CT hypoperfusion complex. Along with that, the moderate to cross ascites was seen in all the cases. So here you can see that free fluid lying in uh, uh, in the hepatorenal space and here on the left, uh, uh, splenorenal and the paracolic gutter. So this was moderate to cross ascites in this patient. So the presence of ascites here correlates with multi-organ dysfunction and is a non-specific sign, but is usually found in these cases. So we want to discussion. So as we saw that shock is a state when oxygen delivery to the tissues is insufficient. 
although there are multiple causes of shock the most commonly discussed cause is hypovolemic shock which occurs secondary to a blunt trauma so hypovolemia will always lead to hypoperfusion but we must always remember that this hypoperfusion need not be always secondary to hypovolemia so what is the difference between these two is that suppose the volume of blood in a patient is fine but the organs are not getting perfused it could be either secondary to say cardiac failure for example so this signs to have they, they have been they have been described predominantly in cases with hypovolemic shock but the literature shows that these signs can also be found in patients with other types of shock like septic shock for example so uh, the signs that we found in our study uh, it can be grouped into two basically vascular signs and visceral signs so what are vascular signs that is related to the vessels so we what we described was a slit like or a flattened inferior vena cava IVC hello sign. However, IVC hello sign, what we saw was in the portal, periportal edema and a small caliber aorta. Whereas the visceral signs is something that is typically described as shock bowel or hyper enhancement with submucosal edema of predominantly the small bowels more than the large bowels. Hyper enhancement of viscera like gallbladder wall, kidney and adrenal glands. The reasons also we've discussed. There could be heterogeneous liver enhancement along with hypo enhancement of the spleen and pancreas. In certain cases, there is something called as shock thyroid. So along with that, the uh, heterogeneous enhancement of thyroid with some uh, free fluid, you know, with some fluid surrounding the thyroid can also be found. So the take-home message from um, this discussion is that the CT hypoperfusion complex has very important prognostic and therapeutic implications. CT imaging represents a useful tool for a complete, rapid and detailed diagnosis of clinically suspected shock, which can be used to improve patient outcomes. So we have described these findings in post-traumatic cases. Literature exists about the presence of these findings in patients even with septic shock. These were my references for today's paper presentation. My name is Dr. Vivek Dharga. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.